<laughs> How bloody good was that? Sapnin people, how are you doing? And welcome back to another match reaction. I do apologise that it has been a while since I have uploaded on the channel. Didn't do a match reaction for the Sunderland game. I didn't watch the match. Do apologise for that. So I didn't do a video. But we are back today. And my God, what a performance and what a result that was today. It finished at the Valley. Charlton Athletic 4, Doncaster Rovers 0. An absolutely battering performance from Johnny Jackson's Red Army. A fantastic, outstanding display. It was against a very poor Doncaster side. We have to say Doncaster were just... Well, they were shit, to be totally honest with you. They were absolutely terrible. Definitely the worst team I've seen us play this season. It may have been them, but you can see the difference that Jackson has on this team already. You know, we're playing with such confidence. We're playing for the badge. We're putting in 110%. We're grafting. We're getting the results. And today was just so much fun to watch. It was so fun. You know, it was just an absolutely incredible day down at the valley and i can't wait for the next game on tuesday man we're out of the bottom four now back-to-back -back wins for the first time this season so obviously jacko was forced into changes for today's game we i didn't expect him to make any changes based off the performance that we had against sunderland although he was forced into two changes with the injuries to adam matthews and sam lavelle i spoke to jackson in the press conference after the match today and he said that matthews uh, his injury isn't long term. He'll be ready or could potentially be available for selection for the Tuesday's game. He was replaced with Chris Gunter, which I was a bit nervy about, as you probably would expect. And then obviously Sam Lavelle, who sadly came off with an injury against uh, Sunderland with a groin injury. He recently underwent surgery and he is going to be out long term, which is a massive, massive shame, a massive loss to us. He's been outstanding since coming into the side, since joining from Morecambe in the summer. Jason Pierce replaced him. And then other than that, it was just unchanged. McGillivray in goal. Bramwo and Purrington were the other defenders to complete the back four then obviously it was Dobson, Lecco, Gilby and Lee and then Stockley and Washington leading the line. Doncaster obviously going into this match they have lost every single game away from home this season so I was I must say very optimistic going into this game you know because they've had such a horrendous away form they are improving ever so slightly or were improving should I say but they were getting you know some form of results together recently but they still but their away record going into this one was absolutely horrendous. So I was expecting us to go into this game and beat them. Although it would be very typical for us to put in the performance that we did against Sunderland and go ahead and lose this one. First half, first opening stages, we have to say, was fairly quiet. Not an awful lot happened. It was clear that we were the better team going forward. Um, that is for sure in the opening stages. But we didn't really get an awful lot going. There was um, a very good opportunity from Elliot Lee, though. There was a slight penalty appeal from Jaden Stockley. I have seen uh, the replay not entirely highly convinced if that was a penalty to be honest with you I may have to watch it again but regardless after that uh, incident happened he literally I think he was just surrounded by two defenders and just went down in the box I don't know if there was anything more than that anyway Perrington managed to recover the ball he managed to keep the ball in play it was inside the box he was about to go out for a goal kick but he managed to keep it in play fell to Elliot Lee he takes a touch smashes it into the far corner but somehow the Doncaster defender has managed to block it off the line with his face very unlucky there from Elliot Lee he should really have uh, found the back of the net there but very well done from the Doncaster defender but needn't to worry as Elliot Lee would open the scoring in rather interesting fashion I think it's safe to say it was a free kick on the left hand side very um very close to the touchline swung it into the box Jaden Stockley he's gone in to win the header and he misses it and it goes all the way into the back of the net for an Elliot Lee goal rather a strange goal it has to be said I'm not too sure how Stockley managed to not win the header although I don't know if it was intentional I don't know whether he left it or not but regardless it goes all the way in and it is a goal 1-0 to Charlton from a Doncaster point of view you probably got to say that's pretty poor defending and goalkeeping to be honest with you they've got to be doing a lot better the fact that they got the fact that a free kick from the far side of the le from the far left side has been swung in and it's gone the whole way in is pretty poor and it's something that Donny really needs to look at and then from that point on really it was just all Charlton I think Ch Doncaster didn't threaten us one bit in that first half they did not offer anything Craig McGillivray was untested I don't even recall him having to make any sort of save not just in the first half but in the entire 90 minutes in general it was just 
like uh, I don't know really Doncaster just did not threaten us one bit and it got just that little bit worse just before half time as Alex Gilby was brought down inside the penalty area there was a little bit of um, a shirt pull I think it was it wasn't the most brilliantly struck penalty in the world but regardless Connor Washington managed to send Pontus Stalberg the wrong way absolutely sent him placed it in the bottom right corner and that is 2-0 to Charlton and that was the half time whistle 2-0 up at the break Pretty much in cruise control, to be honest with you. We were fairly, fairly dominant. I say fairly, very dominant, in fact, inside that first half. As I say, Doncaster just did not offer us anything whatsoever. We were just fantastic in that first half. We just would not stop running. And that is exactly what Jackson wants from his side. You know, he said in his uh, interviews, various interviews that he's done, the bare minimum he expects from his team is to graft, give 110%, play for the badge, and he expects them, as a bare minimum, to be crawling off the pitch. And we have to say... We saw that in abundance today. And in the second half, we didn't take our foot off the gas one bit. You know, we were just absolutely fantastic today. Absolutely extraordinary. As I say, it was against the very poor Doncaster side, but it was just so nice to see us play with such confidence and composure. Honestly, we were just so good. The hoof ball was gone, and when we did play the long balls forward, Stockley was winning everything in the air. Washington was rapid as hell. Obviously, Jonathan Lecco did come off with an injury inside the first half. The Elang Jaisimi came on in the 15th minute mark he was fantastic as well getting about the place skilling up the defenders doing step overs and getting past them putting balls in the box Gilby high energy in the middle of the pitch George Dobson was absolutely extraordinary once again in the middle of that pitch I've told you time and time again George Dobson deserves minutes in the team and in the last two performances against his former club Sunderland and today against Doncaster he deserves to be in the starting 11 he's absolutely fantastic he's been so good since he's come to Charlton and today was another prime example of how good he is cutting out balls in in the middle of the pitch interception after interception and some of the forward balls he was playing today was fantastic absolutely incredible Ben Perrington put in a shift as well. I was quite interested in Perrington's position throughout the game because he, he seemed to be playing like a wing-back role. Half the time, I'd see him like near our box for the majority of the games, to be honest with you. He was constantly getting forward, getting forward, and he'd done that so well. But honestly, every single player on that pitch today was outstanding, every single one of them. And we got two more goals that we deserved, and you could definitely argue that we deserved a lot more. It could easily have been about 7 or 8 nil if it wasn't for Dalberg. Third goal, obviously, came came through the headmaster himself, Jaden Stockley, in rather lucky circumstances, we have to say. Elliot Lee with another free kick on the left-hand side, crosses it into the box. I think he, he tries to go near post. I don't know whether he crossed it in or had a shot, but Dalberg managed to get his hands to it, and he parries it right into the path of Stockley, who's there to knee it in the back of the net for his sixth goal of the season. Three goals in three games for him now. I don't expect anything less from Stockley, to be honest with you. He's been absolutely fantastic so far this season and got himself a deserved goal. And then not long after that, it was my best mate, Ben Purrington, who got on the score sheet for the first time this season. A fantastic cross from Dierlang Jaisimi on the right-hand side after a throw-in. It goes past everybody in towards the back post. There is Purrington to win the header. It's a fantastic header, by the way. It's absolutely fantastic. I think it does come off the post. I'm not entirely sure whether Dalberg got a hand to it. Not entirely sure, but it did find its way into the back of the net. And I and everybody else in the stadium was just in absolute delirium at that point. You know, the chance we've got our Charlton back, you know, Johnny Jackson's Red Army. The fans today, the, you know, kid for a quid, the bumper crowd in today, the atmosphere was electric. It was absolutely extraordinary today. And when that fourth goal went in, it was like a party atmosphere. It was absolutely incredible. Such an amazing day down the valley. And like I said, it could have been a hell of a lot more. It could well have been four, it could well have been five, six, seven, even eight nil. You know, we had some really, really good opportunities throughout the game. You know, Lee's chance in the first half, Alex Gilby's chance when it when he hit that shot on the volley. If that had have flown in the back of the net, oh my God. Because he struck it so well. It come out to him. He, he, he had to hit it. You know, he had to strike that first time. And if that had flown into the back of the net, as I say, uh, that would just been absolute limbs in the in the in the covered end. It would have been absolute scenes. And he did have another good chance in the second half as well. Forced a good save out of Dalberg. Stockley should have had a hat trick. He had one brilliant opportunity when a cross come in. He, it was basically a free header, and he put it straight down the keeper's throat. There was one where he had another header. I think the keeper saved it onto the bar. He had another header saved. You know, Jaisimi had a uh, shot blocked that went out for a corner. You know, we were just ruthless. We were relentless in front of goal, and we constantly even at. 4-0. We were just pressing, 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 trying to get the ball back. And to be honest, Doncaster, 
Uh, they, they, as I say, they just offered absolutely nothing. Donny just gave up, to be honest with you. They just absolutely gave up. I think going into that second half, I don't think I've ever seen a side come out so uninspired as Doncaster did today. You know, they were just, uh, like I say, no, no disrespect to Doncaster. I do wish you all the best this season, but you were just dreadful today. You were just absolutely dreadful. And uh, your away record is just, I, I can't believe it, was it? Like two goals scored, 20 conceded. You've lost every game away from home this year. It's just, absolutely mental but as for Charlton fans we leave the valley in very high spirits has to be said full time as I say Charlton Athletic 4 Doncaster Rovers nil. an outstanding performance from the boys back to back wins for the first time this season two clean sheets as well which is always a bonus and uh, yeah man honestly I, I think for the first time this season I'm finally enjoying Charlton games and I'm finally enjoying going back down the valley and honestly I cannot wait for the next game against Rotherham obviously they're going to be a very tough side you know they just beat Sunderland 5-1 today absolutely extraordinary result they're not going to be easy but with the form that we're in and with the confidence that we have under Jackson because you could see that today we played with such confidence and such composure you know it just shows how much we needed to get Adkins out how much that change in manager like Connor Washington said in the conference today actually he said that with the manager going, it was a bit of a kick up the backside, you know, saying like, right, we need to get out of this because ultimately it is the players and a number of other factors as to why we are in the position that we are. And obviously we should be nowhere near where we are in the table right now because a club like us should be fighting for the top six. We're 12 points off the playoffs, 14 or 15 games into the season, I think it's 15. So... Never say never. I'm not saying it's not possible, but we really do need to go on a run now. We need to start going on a run. Rotherham will be a tough test, and obviously we've got another international break, which is stupid, so we can't keep that momentum going. But if we can beat Rotherham on Tuesday, honestly, that would just be absolutely incredible. Jacko's the man for me. Johnny Jackson is the man. He just gets it. He is just pure, pure Charlton, and you can see that, you know, he's still got a 100% win record as a manager, you know, it's just absolutely fantastic, and he he wants the job, you know, he's passionate, he wants, you can see that he wants this. If he can keep this up, and we can keep this going, and we can go on a really good run, I think Jackson has a very, very good chance of landing this job permanently, and I say, why not? I say, why shouldn't he be given that job on a permanent basis, but yeah, I am... I, I, I'm just buzzing right now. I'm absolutely buzzing. The team is playing with such confidence. We were extraordinary today. We were playing such good football and it shows that this team can play. We can play football with this team with the right system and right now, I think we found it. So that is it for this match reaction, guys. I hope you guys did enjoy it. If you did, can you possibly leave a like, subscribe if you are new around here and turn on those post notifications so you're notified of when I post a new video. What do you guys think of the game? Let me know in the comments below. The atmosphere at the Valley today was absolutely fantastic, as I say, and I think that the mood is starting to shift back to positivity. Everybody is behind Jacko. Everybody is behind the team. And like I say, I am finally starting to enjoy going down the valley and getting the most out of my season ticket. So bring on the next game, man. Bring on Rotherham. I'm really looking forward to seeing what we can do. And hopefully we can keep this run of form going and we can start going on a run and build the momentum and start climbing up the table. Thank you all for watching this video again. This has been Tyler Roninson. Have a nice day and I will see you all on Tuesday or Wednesday when the video will be uploaded for the match reaction against Rotherham United. Take it easy, stay safe, and I'll see you all then.